Welcome my friends, this is Maniacal Incorporated, and today I'm going to recount for you the tale of how A. Finlia got a big red hand on his shield. It's the 867 start, and I'm going to take a look at how the new Legends of the Dead DLC has impacted Ireland. What new content it's added, what new legend do we have? Because it is indeed Legend Singular, the Red Hand of Ulster is the only Legend Seed that the rulers on the island of Ireland have in the 867 or the 1066 start. And I think that members of the Caeth Cahoc dynasty also have it, which means that there are some rulers in Scotland and Wales which have access to the Red Hand of Ulster. It is said that in Ireland's early days a promise was made that the first to lay their hand on Ulster would be given claim to it and be made High King of Ireland. It was our ancestor who had the wit to slice off his own hand and hurl it into Ulster, staining the emerald grass with his blood. So that is a fair summary. And one of the legends is that Hedemon, one of the Milesians, that as he was approaching the, the shore, that there was some kind of agreement that the first to touch the shore would gain the province, so he cut his hand off and threw it from the boat, and won on a technicality. Uh, the Red Hand of Ulster might also be the Right Hand of God. It might represent that. The emblem doesn't really appear until, like, the 12, 1300s. So we're not entirely sure where it actually comes from, but here is somebody strongly associated with it, a member of the Enail, A. Finlia, High King of Ireland, since the death of Muel Shocknell Machmuel Rooney. So there is a rotating arrangement in place. So on the death of the King of Meath, the title has rotated, the King of Tara, High Kingship of Ireland, has rotated to A. Finlia, and on his death it will rotate back south to Flanchina, who is not actually in power in Meath at this point in time. But, our first and our main goal in achieving this legend is going to be to gain control of the province of Ulster and get some money together. Now, A focused on martial education. Unfortunately, he has focused on the overseer trait, which isn't brilliant. Plague resistance. So what we're going to do is... I think we're going to go just flat out strategy focus for now. And we're going to go down the gallantry tree. Here is our son, Donal. Uh, we have options to marry him into West Francia. I could go and, and recreate my first CK3 playthrough. Basically in its entirety. But what I'm going to do instead. They're not great options. But we're going to see about forming an alliance with somebody on the island of Ireland. I think we'll go with their goal. For the stewardship traits. Now, if we desperately need alliances, we can, of course, take secondary wives, try and get some alliances. We might be able to put together another one on the island of Ireland. We have a number of other children as well that we can marry out for alliances. And what we could also do, he won't accept an alliance at the moment, but we could focus on our brother-in-law, the King of Alba. So here is our wife, Muel Mwira, and she is the sister of the King of Scotland. He will not accept an alliance at the moment due to predominantly differences in faith. Uh, when A dies, so if we look here a second, here is Lan or Lawn, the mother of Flanchina. So she was the wife of where's he gone to? Muel Shocknell Mac Muel Rooney, A's predecessor as the High King of Ireland. So on his death, A married his predecessor's widow. When A dies, his successor, Flanchina, is going to marry Muelmura. There you go. And speaking of Flanchina marrying A Finlia's widow, maybe it's their joint service on the council that will bring them together. So Muelmura is assisting us and Flanchina is our spy master. He would also make a slightly better marshal than Flanachon, but 
there's nobody else with anything near that in terms of spy craftsmanship, so I think we're going to have to leave the council as it is. I might actually get Goitna working on development for the fun of it. And I have my archers stationed at Dunanaul, so I'm going to increase them by one, so we're spending prestige. We are down into minus 0 0.2. Prestige shouldn't be the worst to get back up, because uh, we're going to need to get some numbers together to try and raid down some regions for money. Recently I did a video on the marriage laws in medieval Ireland and I'm going to do one at some stage on Tanistry, Tanistry succession and the high kingship and how that all operated. So what we have here as the title of high chiefdom of Meath is in effect the rotating high kingship between the northern and southern Enail. And for now I'm actually going to support Flanchina for that position. He has the best marshal, but he is craven, deceitful, he's diligent. Do you know what? Yeah, I'm going to support Flanacon instead, our nephew. So it's Flanacon who is currently serving as our marshal. Flanchina has slightly better marshal, and in general, in the 867 start, a good marshal, a good military figure, is who you want in charge of your kingdom. And then again, we mightn't need a martial figure. Maybe this can be done diplomatically. Here is Ulster. And if we offer vassalization, they will refuse minus 27 because we're arrogant. However, Kongluk, if we offer vassalization, will just barely accept. And the very last thing I'll do before starting up is I will put a 16-year-old in charge of the kingdom's health. What could possibly go wrong? And we're off to a great start already. So Kongluk has accepted vassalization. And we have an alliance with Donika Matovdabwerin in Urvuen. Now the good news is that Kongluk is a much better marshal than our current marshal. The bad news is that our current marshal is our player heir. So he's not going to be happy with that. I've just taken a look at my list of knights and they are absolutely terrible. A summons has been sent out for new champions to join the court and for Horta, a chaste giant. His marshal isn't great, but his prowess is, and it's only six quid to hire him. So Fokorta goes into the army. And we are told that our dynasty has gained an ominous reputation. And of course, at the moment, because of the way the game treats the Kaed Kahuk, the Hundred Battles dynasty, Constantine. The King of Alba is the current head of the family, so he gets to make all the decisions about the uh, the legacies and whatnot. I imagine we haven't actually gotten any just yet. Oh, that's what they meant by ominous reputation. Afin Lea has just gained his first martial trait. I am indeed going to go for stalwart leader. I was thinking about heading for strategist, but we'll start down the galleon tree. And we'll head for Chivalric Dominance, get some increased knight effectiveness. Now we can see that things are hotting up on the island. Connacht has raised its army and is marching to Athlone. Athlomond had its army raised about 1,200 and I think they've headed for Desmond. Ormond I think was actually beaten back out of Ormond and are heading back in that direction. Now the problem is that Brefni have raised their army. What we're going to do is raise local raiders in our territory and we're going to head for Ulster. Afinlia is in charge. Ulster has actually just raised its army. They're heading in the direction that I was thinking about going in. So I was thinking that this would leave us open to attack into Scotland. And I'm not going to lie, but I totally forgot that Athlone is part of my territory. I'm the High King of Ireland. I forgot about that. 
So I think just before they manage to siege down the area, we are in to a battle against Connacht. Now we've driven him back. We can see our new knights, Fohorte and Muel Fohortig, who I just hired before the start of the battle, are leading the kill count, and there's Flanacoin, trying desperately to get noticed the way we'll keep him as our heir. And Leinster was just standing down its army as we arrived. So we've managed to hold on. We should get a couple of places sieged. And Linster are getting a bad baiting again. And we have some Vikings on the island. And so after a short but successful first raiding season, I'm going to stand down the army to let them replenish their numbers. We got a good chunk of money together there. We managed to push as far south as Leinster. And... Defended at loan from an incursion by Connacht. So now that A has defended his lands and spread evidence of his martial might as far south as Leinster, he is in a position to form the Duchy of Ulster. And that is one part of what is needed to move up the chain of the Red Hand of Ulster to on to the next phase. We need to get up to Illustrious as our level of fame. So that's going to take a bit of work. We're going to need to work on getting some prestige together. And we also now have the option for uh, to be a custodian of a holy site. And I imagine this is possibly because we have Armagh within our territory. So we need another 113 gold. And we need to get up to Paragon of Virtue. That's going to... I have a feeling that's going to take a while. With the number of Viking powers in the region, we're going to begin the process of swaying Cosentine to see if we can maybe get an alliance out of him at some stage. We have another martial lifestyle perk. I'm going to go for chivalric dominance. Poor old Cahlon of the Dal Theotok. We began our great campaign that established Ulster by raiding his lands, and I think that he has seen evidence of our martial superiority and he will now accept vassalization and become part of the Duchy of Ulster. Now it is fantastic to have him as part of the kingdom but the problem is that he wants a seat on the council and he is stone useless. Well his army is also stone useless and we've already beaten it once so for now we will leave him off the council the only position that he could take is Marshall, and we have a perfectly suitable candidate there at the moment. So Cosentine, for all of his apprehension about our faith, has decided that he wants an alliance with us, and he has offered us one, without us even getting anywhere near... Maybe he's shy, so maybe he doesn't like the fact that we're trying to sway him. Maybe he just wants us out of the court, and he's prepared to offer us an alliance to get rid of us. We will accept. This is in no way worrying to the people of Ireland, but we have received news that far afield there is a plague spreading which turns people into panthers, panthers pox. A has the opportunity for another martial lifestyle perk. I'm going to take Never Back Down. So to try and get that prestige together, the first thing that I'll do is begin the process of romancing my wife now that she has convinced her brother to form an alliance with us. And considering that we are of Irish culture, I think it's only right that we would write a love poem. Muelmuera won't resist my charms for long. So as part of the update, the Irish culture has refined poetry, but as part of the update, legend spread chance, plus 5% that has been attached to the refined poetry cultural tradition. So if we can get ourselves the legend of Ulster, we can get our poets to spread it far and wide, maybe out to wherever those panthers are. 
into October of 870 and what better way to romance a woman than to raise all of your raiders and send them into Brefni. Brefni has had its army standing here for quite a while. So we're going to try and knock that army out. Raid the region. Probably push into Mayo. And then probably turn around and head for Scotland. And in the middle of this battle, our pregnant wife lets rip the loudest fart that has ever been heard. Legends will be written about this fart and the smell. Could this be the fart that brings down a kingdom? Because we're going to have to spend 150 prestige to get her to gain some opinion with us. So I think it's a 67% chance that our wife farted and a 33% chance that she wasn't the one who farted. Was our wife the one who farted? She was. And we won the battle. Kongluk did a great job in command of that battle, but you know what? With the smell in the court at the moment and as probably as red as A's face is, he's going to take command and... Uh, He's going to take command of the siege and pretend that nothing happened. And as we leave court to take part in the siege of Brefni, our wife has given birth to a child, Niall. So interestingly enough, we don't have a son called Niall at the moment. And Wilmwira was, indeed, the mother of Niall Glundov, Niall Blackney, who would die in the Battle of Island Bridge in uh, 919, but he will succeed Flanchina as the King of Tara. So a very appropriate name. Refni have gone in against us. We have become wounded. We're going to have to move the forces now, and the problem is that we probably don't have enough to take Kamuk, so we're going we're gonna to withdraw them back. We were wounded, and then we weren't. That 16-year-old is doing mighty work as a physician. And we've actually just been attacked by some Viking raiders. The absolute devils. I had my army standing here, just trying to get some forces back, and they landed straight off a boat. They had vastly superior numbers, but because of that disembarkation penalty, they're getting a good baiting. Fohartha has killed one of their knights, and off they go. That has put us in a bad position where we've had to stand down the army. We're making progress towards Illustrious, but we are losing 134 a month at the moment because of our unraised levy, so we'll have to try and get those numbers back up. Uh, we can field 1,200 at the moment, which puts us... It's actually a bit behind Keen Fiala. I think he is on 1-5. He is indeed, so... Hakeen Fiala Mahmurcha in Thomond, he's taken Desmond, so he can now put together the largest force on the island. We're going to write another poem for our wife about one of her traits that impresses us. If we were James Joyce, we would have written about that fart, but we will go with Youthful Vigor. To the miserable A. Well... I was going to say she didn't like it, but she said, I will never let you go. Your unusual mole is like pretty nice pebbles. I wish only to be by your side, that I may know if you're as thin as you look from afar. This A is small, but that A is far away. We don't have any great candidates for the position at the moment, but by taking household guards, we're going to increase the number of knights that we can equip by four. So we have Fohorta leading the list. We have a guest who's a bit pricey. Well, Fohortig got himself badly wounded. There's Flancoin, and we can see that we're down into some terrible, truly, truly terrible numbers. So, yeah, we're going to have a job getting some knights together. We've gotten the army up to a good solid 1,000, so I'm going to have Kongluk training the new mess of knights that we have all of a sudden, because if we can get those numbers up some bit, they're going to compensate for the fact that we don't have as large an army as Thomond. 
Thomond sets its sights on Ulster and moves north, we could be in trouble. A is also going to use this opportunity to switch to the diplomacy lifestyle, so that he can control the writing of history and write out any knowledge about that big fart. We're going to hit for Firm Hand and then Praetorian Guard, so that's going to give monthly prestige per knight plus 1%, and we do have a lot of knights, so we're going to go for the Majesty Focus, uh, just to get that bit of prestige going. We're not too far away from Illustrious at the moment. And I think it's about... I've actually forgotten what it is. Is it... Uh, 39 gold, so we should be able to get that in uh, one more raid. We're on a wild hunt when all of a sudden our wife, Wilmura, screams, I'm coming for you, my love. Within what must have been a minute, but felt like an hour, I reach a clearing. She is on the ground before me, opposite her, just about to strike, is a panther. Oh no, the plague has spread to Ireland. My arrow strikes true and the beast falls to the ground for a moment. All she can do is stare, but then she tumbles towards me and throws herself into my arms. So we're going to gain 150 prestige. Oh yeah, and we find our soulmate as well. Yeah, that's totally why we did this. Now I said we should be able to get the money together in one more raid. But I'm not seeing many raiding opportunities. Thomond has risen its forces. Has it gone to war? It's defending against an attempt to seize Ormond, I think. So it's got a fairly hefty army together. Uh, 2,100, 1,600 of its own forces. And Ormond is bringing in some troops. And I was so distracted by that war that I missed an invite to Chieftain Kongluk's hunt. 14 days away and I won't make it there and I've tried getting various different combinations together of mercenaries to speed us up but nope not good enough and not alone are we not going to get to go on a hunt instead we are being called into a war against Inverness so that's Ivar the Boneless with 3,100 forces against your 1,800 and my 1,200 we would accept but I would much rather have gone on that hunt I've managed to raise the forces in Ulster I'm hoping to try and oh god he's going to get cornered already and Halfton has joined, so what are we looking at? Yeah. Now, I didn't realize that it's poor Constantine is actually getting uh, attacked. So, do you know what? I can't blame him. I can't blame him. He should have gotten some better alliances together, though. We've just received news that our steward has died. And we are in an opportunity to replace him with Donal our son and champion. I'm trying to siege down an area here, but we don't have much of a force that's going to be able to do much sieging. We war for a very brief moment in time in a position where if the Scottish king had turned around, uh, we could have probably taken on the Isles, but uh, not anymore, I'd say. So, Constantine is heading... Oh, he's heading for their capital. Okay, that's a, yeah, that's a good idea, I suppose. We're going to have to go into this battle. I don't know if we're going to be able to contribute in any way, make, shape, or form. Do you know what? We held them for a while. We held them for a while. But uh, we didn't have the numbers. Fohorta, our great knight, has been maimed. And they are heading now for the Scottish capital. Do you know what? We made we made a good showing. We made a good showing. Got in a bit too late into that battle. Scotland went off on a solo run heading for the capital of the Isles. And I would imagine that that's pretty much going to be it. Do you know what? It was a good showing. We did the parish proud. Scotland, no, stop it. 
in the intervening period, I think we were actually raided by... We're being raided by Connacht. Did they go for Athlone again? Those devils. So there goes the Scottish capital. They're heading back. We've sent our forces into the Isles as well. And there is the defeat. I was at one stage thinking of improving diplomatic relations with the Isles, considering that we border them in two separate places. And now that they've pushed in and taken Inverness and weakened our strongest ally, uh, we might have to think about doing that. What has happened down here is Ormond... Ormond has fallen, I think, to the, the Norse adventurers who've shown up. I'm not too sure if... The battle is still going on. It is indeed. So I'm not too sure how that's going to go. There's that massive Thomond Ormond army. Can I not just do one playthrough in 867 without worrying about the Vikings? This time the Vikings have not distracted me from an invite to a hunt. Chieftain Cahlon in Ulla. He's hosting an event. Big unhappy face, he's not... I don't think he likes me all that much. I could customise the route to head for Hadrian's Wall or the capital of Alba. They're all martial areas. So I think for now we'll save our money and just head straight to Ulla. So it's not the largest guest list, but there is an impressive list of people here. There is Aethinlia, there is the Chieftain of Oriel. And there is Flenshina from Athlone, so all of my vassals are here. And as befits a man who hopes to become known as the Red Hand of Ulster, we are going to hunt a great beast. We're going to hunt a duck. So Chieftain Kongluk has been admiring my bird since we parted for the hunt. Because, of course, this is the first time we weren't at Kongluk's hunt, so he never, he never got to see our bird. We could impress him with our falconry skills. I'm going to go for this 39% option to get some extra prestige, however. Instead of my falcon grabbing a fish out of the river, I will grab a fish out of the river. I failed. I just made a fool of myself. We could increase our hunter trait and lose some stress, but... Let's see if we can... Do you know what? This, this thing is... Yeah, this is going to fail. Absolutely, I will increase my hunter trait. Chieftain Cahalon's Game Masters have gotten sight of a raft of brown ducks. Why are the ducks on a raft? I thought they could swim already as it is. It is time. So you can tell from all those unhappy faces that the ducks managed to swim away on their raft. Yeah, this thing, was a, this thing was a disaster from the start. I think it was the fact that I fell into a river while trying to grab some fish. That probably... That probably messed it up. The duck indeed eluded us. This time. But we will have our revenge on that duck. Most important things for us, we've lost some stress. I didn't have any stress. We've gained some prestige. I gained some legitimacy. And gained the trait hunter. After failing to catch a duck, A has his first diplomacy lifestyle trait. We're going for firm hand, monthly prestige per dread. Dread isn't all that high, but it's going to open up the monthly prestige per night. It is July 875. A Finn Leah has the money that's needed for the legend of the Red Hand of Ulster. The problem is that we need to get up to illustrious in terms of our fame. We have a good chunk to go, and as such, he has raised his raiders and is going to begin an attack into uh, Connacht to gain revenge for the attacks that they carried out against us during that war in Inverness. The problem is as well that this region, which I would have looked at attacking, I think it is about to be conquered, or at least this county is going to be conquered by... Oh, those Vikings. Connacht has raised its forces, and it actually has a pretty strong contingent. 
It's telling us we're going to win. I was going to try and pull out and get on better ground. We do have better knights than Connacht, though. And we have taken victory there. So this is boggy area, which is to Connacht's advantage. Actually, I don't think it's to anyone's advantage. Connacht is moving out to intercept us. I think that was a bad idea. Our physician has gained in skills. Now, in the midst of it all, the Pope has called on us to abandon the practice of polygamy, which is usually one of the cornerstones of my Irish playthroughs. Polygamy did start to be phased out around the early 900s, but with divorce at will, that didn't make a huge difference. And I kind of went over this in a video I made recently on the marriage laws in medieval Ireland. Of course, with the way that insular Christianity is implemented here, we don't have divorce at will. So this is going to be a massive drawback. We will uphold Catholic doctrine. We will gain that one level of devotion that might help us with one of the other legends. So we've lost polygamy. And we're now defaulting to the monogamous marriage type of insularism. This is the big issue, though. Divorce must be approved. So, historically inaccurate, the Irish would have been practicing a divorce at will. I'd like to see that added to the base game. It makes the whole polygamy a lot less important. And uh, I discussed that in the, uh, the video on the marriage laws in medieval Ireland that I put out there recently. Uh, this has been corrected in mods like the Tip Volume 2 mod, which I'm going to do a playthrough in soon. But uh, we have lost polygamy. Oh no. It has increased our level of devotion though. So we're now up to Faithful, heading for Devoted Servant. And that's going to be a thousand. That's not actually all that bad. So that's going to help us if we want to go for the custodian of the holy site. Holding a sacred site for insularism is a mark of holiness itself. It sure is. So here is some hefty Norse numbers in this region. I'm wondering what... Um, let's take a look. How are their finances? Their finances are solid, so they can pretty much hang around here for a while. They're not losing, they're not gaining. And I'm not too sure what these guys are doing. They're gaining a slight bit, so... Keen Fiala has died, his son Owen has taken over from him. And it's just basically these two massive standing armies just facing off against each other. We've headed back to Leinster, and Leinster isn't happy. And I think we're being raided. This is the second doll that we have found in Leinster. So we could bring a doll back to Niall or to Crianach. Ah, we'll give it to Niall. And hopefully Niall is still going to be at the court waiting for us. There is a large Montegau army. They've managed to get a bit of a holding here. So they've come across and are raiding our territory. The devils. So they've captured Crianach and Moeldov. Thankfully though, they didn't get that doll because we gave it to Niall instead. And we're coming under attack from more Vikings. Jorvik has headed across. Uh, we've become the head of the Caedhcaeth dynasty. And here we see the sacking of Ulster by Jorvik. Curse those Jorvik dogs. We'll give Cahalon some money. Don't tell me the devils are going to go for our ma. We're not really in a position to resist them. My son Donal knows that we're a bit caught for money. Well, we're not, but the Vikings are taking a good chunk from us. So he found 15 quid in a tower. Fair play to him. Oh, they're heading for our ma. Ragnar Hastinson. With an army of 1,200, he's going to offer us some money for our daughter, or he's going to request some money. We're going to have to accept. 
Our man has fallen and Jorvik returns home. So a lot of our trouble was caused by Magrón in Connacht. He attacked our lands while we were on campaign in Scotland. We attacked him. And now he wants to write a letter. He heard good things about us. He heard that we abandoned polygamy. We'll frame it and put it up in the hall. We're in need of some new alliances, so I have married my daughter Enya to the son and heir of the ruler of Strathern in what's left of the south of Alba. So that's going to bring in a handful of forces. It'll protect us if the Vikings think about establishing a permanent hold on any of our territory. Oh dear God, no. Somebody in Dundelgan has started reading Frank Herbert's The White Plague. So this is the disease that mad John Rowe O'Neill, a crazed Irish-American, has infected Ireland and Britain with to take revenge for the death of his family. Uh, started here on the coast, it has spread into Ireland. So just after seeing a fleet of Vikings arrive, I'm not too sure where they have gone in against. Is there another attempt? To, to take some land. So somebody is trying to seize Connacht. With all this activity going on, I'm going to begin building war camps. It'll increase the number of knights that we have, increase their effectiveness, and it will give some increases to stationed. I have archers stationed here at the moment, so they're not on the list. I'm going to put in some heavy infantry and station them here instead. And with the Viking menace growing ever stronger around us, A has unlocked another diplomacy lifestyle perk. We're going to take Praetorian Guard. And I'm going to have him change back to the martial lifestyle and go for the chivalry focus. So a very peculiar thing has just happened. Athlone declared war on Brefni at the same time that Connacht declared war to take Brefni. Athlone has just taken it, which means that Connacht is now at war with us. What's interesting is that we can raise our army and potentially send it against these Vikings. Because I would rather that we keep them off the island. Or as far away from the north of the country as possible. And unfortunately it didn't happen early enough. The war has been invalidated, I imagine, because Connacht no longer exists. It is now under the control of these Vikings. Now the Vikings have arrived on our land, but thankfully... Frank Herbert's The White Plague has left. I was hoping, I was thinking it wasn't going to push any further north. We emerge from the wreckage of the old world, and the time has come to consider the new. So yeah, we will be able to spend eight to assist the regions that were affected. And Connacht is now making its way towards Leinster. To seize control of Leinster. So what we're going to do. Is raise all. In Alloch. We don't have numbers as strong as they have. Convert them to raiding. And we'll see if we can attack anything. And make them hostile. Uh, Leinster is going to try and hit Connacht. We've managed to raid down Killala. Our vassal was taken prisoner. That's not great. Our son Donal has come of age. They grow up so fast. His prowess is not great. He is a great diplomat though. And we are indeed hostile with the Vikings. It's looking like it could be a fairly even fight though. 
uh, one of our knights was killed. And now Linster is angry with us. Linster, we're helping. Okay, fine. I'm going to seize this place down. So we've only a few more days that we're hostile with Connacht. We've taken enough from Leinster. We're going to gain some piety. The problem is that uh, Connacht is pretty much in an ability where... Yeah, Leinster's, Leinster's army is gone now because of that. So, good job, Leinster. I blame Leinster. I played no part in this. So we made a desperate bid to save Leinster. It has failed. We could wait until they conquer Leinster and then attack them, but I would like to keep Leinster on the table and if we can take Connacht, we will effectively, bar Dublin, control the entire northern half of the island. We are going to declare war on the Vikings of Connacht to subjugate the province. We've started sieging down Crochen. We have nobody that knows how to work siege equipment. The ruler of Strathern. Is he our son-in-law? Uh, he's just become the new ruler. Has come in. It's actually entirely possible that the Vikings will take Leinster. Incorporate it into Connacht and then we'll take Connacht. So they have indeed taken Leinster. We're going to make white peace. No, we're not going to make white peace. We're going to enforce our demands. We could have them give us hostages. Sure. Peace be with you. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to the bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. So be it. And now we can demand that he ends his war with Leinster. Which is the, the whole reason that I went to war in the first place. I did this because I love democracy. To protect Leinster. And he doesn't care. See, this is all well and good. But the problem is that there's nowhere left for us to raid. We now have too many areas under our control. We can't raid Munster. Because it has an army of 1,600. It has actually fallen by about 1,000. And Osri, yeah, we could raid Osri. Probably demand their vassalization now at some stage. Well, now that we have, without asking for him, a Viking in our court, Henri Gruigluffa, that's what I'm going to call him, we might as well try and get him to not attack us. I'm going to assign him as our... New Marshal. So Kongluk has served us very well up until now. So that's brought him up a good chunk. That's brought him up a good chunk. And we'll also start a scheme to sway him. And as for Henri's daughter, Anya, I'm going to have her educated by the Bishop of Meath. And we will have him convert her faith. I'm not actually too sure who his heir is. It is Anya. Well, there you go. Oh, Henri, you and your independence factions. We have a lifestyle perk for the military option I am very much considering because it would give us a 20% monthly prestige bonus. We're going to reset the perks. So there is the Gallant trait. And for the two remaining, I think I'm actually going to go for Strategist. And Organized March. Army movement speed increases. Heavy infantry. Archer screen. And we have our two diplomacy as well. So, Firm Hand and Praetorian Guard. And we now have an option as to what course we want to take. I will bite my lip and stay focused. We're going to gain more stress and we have to get rid of that within 
the next five years. Now, I didn't think it was going to take this long to get the prestige together. It's predominantly the fact that we got stripped of so many raid targets. That's the main issue. We do need to start thinking about the succession. I am going to make Ulster the primary title. Not that that massively matters, because I think we're going to have to also proclaim the Kingdom of Ireland, the High Kingship. So that's going to be a good chunk of money. That's the major problem. We're going to create that title. As High King, you have new duties and responsibilities. You will be expected to regularly hold court, solving the disputes of the realm and letting your courtiers take part in daily routines. Murcha Mac Muenoch of the Uvron Shola. So we could try and attempt him uh, attempt to install him as the the ruler of Connacht we could grant Connacht to him so this is the result of A's desperate attempts to keep the Vikings out of Ireland the seizure of Connacht his attempts to defend Leinster all of them failed and here he finds himself with a crown upon his head as the new High King of Ireland. We only have one court artifact. We used to usually get two banners on forming the High Kingship, and there it is. The Red Hand of Ulster. We still haven't achieved the legend, but we've gotten the banner. Prior to this, Ossery refused to accept vassalization. They will accept now. And I wonder if Munster will accept. All those raiding targets lost like tears in rain. So poor Owl Anya. Her father basically took her out of school, took her away from all of her friends, brought her to a strange foreign country, immediately declared war on all the people there. And now she finds herself stuck in a court, one of the courts that they have established, and nobody will talk to her because of her wicked faith. We could get her to repent. We will gain some piety, that's very nice. Anya, you must repent. Now, Anya has indeed accepted the insular faith. Her father, however, has not. And he's gotten rid of his independence faction and now put together a dissolution faction. He is very disillusioned with the way things have gone. And now that she has converted to insularism in the beautiful... Chateau in uh, Donegal, Anya is beginning to wonder where her allegiances lie. She is also becoming disillusioned. We're predating Stockholm Syndrome by a couple of, a couple of centuries, a millennia and a bit. So it's, it's now going to be known as Donegal Syndrome. We've taken her as a hostage and she is now going to begin to question where her loyalty is. And we are once again the head of the Conkeld Cahoc dynasty, or the Keld Cahoc dynasty. We held it for a brief period there before it was taken from us. And now that we have so many new, powerful vassals in the kingdom, I've had to move Henri to steward, which he's not great at. But Owen in Munster is absolutely useless, and he would have gone apoplectic if I hadn't given him a position on the council, so he's the new marshal, and Henri has been moved to steward. Flanchina, there are better candidates for spymaster, but again, he's a powerful vassal, so he's being left there, and we have nobody for chancellor, so our son Donal, I actually installed him as our new chancellor. 
We could go for domestic affairs to try and improve things with people, but we are getting a bit of a, a prestige bonus, and we do need to get that up to illustrious. And with our money in the gutter, we are bankrupt from forming the Kingdom of Ireland. We're going to begin a major incursion. Now that we have an army that will allow us to do so, down the coast of England. And we're going to raid as much as we can and try and get as much money together as we can. We need about 300 gold. As part of our attempts to sway Henri, we're visiting Mayo. Castle Mayo. We could try and get rid of that stress, but you know what? We'll stay for a while and help him. Henri has a chest of unguarded gold. And a messy bookcase. We could also help out with the dining hall, but you know what? I think it's time for bed. And some things never change. We've captured another doll. This is the third doll that we have captured. The first as High King of Ireland. And you know what? We're going to give it to our best bud, Anya. Something that has caused the Kingdom of Ireland. And before it, the... Kingdom of Ulster, and before that the Kingdom of Meath, tremendous trouble is walls. Don't know how they work. We have captured Gotthard von Lusita. Lusitia? We've captured a man who knows how to make holes in walls. We're going to recruit him. Will he convert? He will. He may continue. That's fine. Do what you want in secret. Knock holes in walls and pretend that you care about our slightly modified version of Jesus. I don't care. And Henri is very happy with that visit that we made recently. Opinion increases by 10, so hopefully he'll think about not waging war against us. Now we're going to make for the Isle of Man. We've captured a Cumbrian who is not worth any money, will not give us a weak hook, but he'll convert to insularism. Sure. Haha, <laughs> wait until he finds out that we got rid of polygamy. So now that we control the Keith Kahak dynasty, we have the opportunity to unlock a dynasty legacy. And do you know what? I'm going to take a look at the heroic bloodline heroes of old gain a mighty endeavor for Kaeth Kahak legend seed so I presume it's a mighty endeavor for Kaeth Kahak is the name of the legend seed and it can be used once per dynasty and can be used by any member okay how many dolls is too many dolls Kreenok you didn't get one the last time before you were kidnapped by these guys. I'm thinking about making a tour down to them. We're wandering around in this region at the moment, and they actually have their army up here, and they've cut me off from raiding in this region. Oh, yeah. There's another... Another doll. Oh, we made a friend. Thank you, lonely doll. So here is our mighty endeavor for Keith Kahak, and it costs 201 gold. Well, it costs 240. Uh, we need 201 more, so everything is fairly pricey. We have sieged down the entirety, I was going to say the entirety of the north of England, this bit here. We've headed for Lancashire. Uh, we took some money here in Westmoreland. We have 104, and here it is. These guys, they captured my daughter and my son when they raided Alec when we were in a really bad position. Now their capital has been raided, but we do have the opportunity to lose a good chunk of forces. And you know what? Just out of pure venom and viciousness, we'll take it. Uh, there is a dancing plague in Carrick Fergus, I think. Well, this is awkward. Niall and Anya are happy at play. 
because I was considering attempting to organize a betrothal between them. Well, now they're treating each other like brother and sister. How wonderful. So Anya will be more likely to be loyal to you when she becomes an adult. And at the moment, she has no siblings. How wonderful. Uh, we've raided down the lands of Ragnar. I would greatly enjoy taking bounteous plunder from this devil. Do you know what? We're going to show that we're better than the Vikings. Because I do need to get up to the next level of devotion. And we don't have a huge amount of money to uh, decrease our stress. So we're going to have to say that we have taken enough because if we're adding more stress it's going to get harder for us to to get rid of the stress penalty. Basically we're going to have a mental breakdown if we take slaves or bounties plunder. We've taken enough already. And unfortunately for now I think that's as much as we can do. That's 112 gold. It still puts us a bit behind the uh, the total that we need. And we are coming home to a region wracked by dancing plague. People have died. They have danced themselves to death. As we return home, Onya tells us that she wants to know more about the illustrious House of the Enail, just as her father has abandoned his attempts at establishing a dissolution faction. We've managed to get him on side by swaying him. We could say that we're a bit of a legend ourselves. She's already at 100. Opinion with us. Have you heard of Chieftain Nile of Athlone? And we've also gotten those sparring grounds finished, which I built to help us ward off the Vikings. And you know what? If I hadn't built them, we'd have the money by now to, uh, to get this done and dusted. So the Dancing Plague has left our realm. Ulster is a haven for those with sore legs. Is it going to cost much to rebuild? No. A is actually quite close to unlocking another martial trait, but he's also quite close to the end of his life. I'm going to move him across to wealth focus because he is very much focused on wealth at the moment in the hopes that that will give some bit of a boost to our gold income. And I'd probably head for the architect route. Buildings are always expensive in Ireland. So one disease leaves and another arrives. Ferns has been hit by planes flux and it has started moving rapidly towards Carlo. Oh, Boys, tis making, tis making some amount of noise. So it began in Leinster. It's already claimed four people. A critical penalty to health. And a severe penalty to elderly health. And indeed, A is shoving on. Now it has already left. It looks to be... It doesn't stay for very long. But where it stays, it kills. Here's our son, Niall, who we are raising. We could make him callous, but you know what? And it's especially not a good idea to, uh, to gain more stress. Uh, we'll make him compassionate. And just like that, the disease has disappeared, struck the south of the country, and has vanished back to wherever it came from. And as that plague leaves, our son, Mueldov, wishes to bestow a new nickname upon A. A the Righteous. This will give us 150 prestige. A's level of fame. His glory is widely known. That has indeed brought us to Illustrious. And we're only a few bob away from getting the final requirements to begin the process of pushing up the legend of the Red Hand of Ulster. Now one disease that is still rampant throughout the kingdom is Donegal Syndrome. Anya has begun to address us as father. How long has she been in the court? Has she spent the majority of her life 
as a hostage in this court, I would say so. She has taken to calling us father. She notices her mistake and corrects herself. Father will do nicely. Anya becomes a member of House Enail. With my erstwhile hostage, now considered a firm part of House Enail, the prior arrangement, with Chieftain Henri is redundant. And she is most welcome. Now I'm not too sure if this has actually disinherited her. It has removed her in its entirety from the succession in Hymeny. So the second option said it would disinherit her. Well, there you go. We have adopted a daughter into the family through Donegal Syndrome. And there is now a new Baba in line for the throne here. If Henri had been a bit older and less likelier to produce a child, it would have been a bit more... I won't say serious. I, I don't know. It was unlikely that we were going to get another alliance. It would have been fun to try and have an e-nail on the, uh, the once Viking throne of Connacht. We lost a chance at an alliance and an e-nail provincial king. But we gained a daughter who we will immediately marry out for an alliance. Bye, Anya. I never did learn how to pronounce her name. A. Finlia has been moving dangerously close to a mental breakdown as a result of his inability to clear that stress which he has held for close to five years now. And the reason for that is because he has been stockpiling his money so that he can start a new legend. The legend of the Red Hand of Ulster. So we'll take it for ourselves. You cannot complete or abandon the legend for five years. We will create the Red Hand of Ulster. High King A of Ireland was born from the pool of Chieftain Niall of Athlone's own flesh and blood. Ew. With the natural power of his great lineage, was there ever any doubt that he would achieve great things? There was no doubt in his mind. A was to unify all of Kingdom of Ireland under his rule. In the name of Nile, the bickering of lesser lords and ladies was about to reach its end, and all would call, or come to call, A their liege. A's legend culminates in a marvellous adventure. His great deeds of arms were such that all kings had wonder thereof, and many nobles and commoners came to his encounter, for they wished to see the legend in the flesh. The beautiful countryside, where's it going to? There we go. Of Kingdom of Ireland. Had fallen to brigands and bandits since the Nile time. Ah yes, the Nile time. But A soon set to work, righting wrongs and protecting the people he was to rightfully rule. The journey was fraught with danger. But with all that A had done for Kingdom of Ireland and her people, could there be any doubt that he was chosen by God to rule? From the city, what city? To the humblest homestead, all cry out the name, A, in ecstatic exultation. Well, there you go. So begins the legend of A. Finlia, the Red Hand of Ulster. To increase its quality, which will gain access to the Expand the Kingdom decision, allowing you to immediately drift a duchy title into your realm, so we could think about Scotland, potentially, some, uh, some territory in Scotland. Gain a claim on every existing de jure title inside of... I already have them all. Except Dublin. And gain commission legend artifact decision. And 400 legitimacy. And increase the legitimacy level to true. And a chance of building a legendary palace. So we need another 190 gold. And we must spread the legend of the Red Hand of Ulster to 100 Baronies. I presume that because he is working on this legend, he can't take on uh, any others. So for five years, he is unable 
to take part in any others, and that could very well take us up to the end of A. Finlay's life. And from such humble beginnings as these are mighty legends born. On the next episode, I'm going to spread the legend of the Red Hand of Ulster. I'm going to see if I can prevent A from having a mental breakdown. We're going to need to get some money together and send him on a hunt or something like that. And we also have the succession to sort out because he is coming towards the end of his life. And I think it's basically direct succession, eldest son will inherit the Kingdom of Ireland, so we might see about changing the succession to Tanistry. But there are still many great things to be done in forging the legend of the Red Hand of Ulster. Thank you for joining me on this episode, and I hope that you will join me on the next one, where I kidnap more young children and convince them that I am their real father. <laughs>